RCR-TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and welcome to HetNet Happenings, where we take a look at all things DAS, small cell, Wi-Fi, and much, much more. Comscope, thinking beyond today's technology to help you make the best decision for your network and your business. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Welcome back to HetNet Happenings. Show this week is brought to you by our friends at Comscope. We are here in Nice, France at the TM Forum Telecom Software Show. You'll see behind me here, this is the uh, catalyst area of the show floor, and there's lots of really innovative and collaborative projects that were previewed this week. For a lot of coverage on this catalyst, you can check out the RCR Wireless News website. We've got a few clips that we'd like to share with you this week. In this first segment, we're going to hear from Ulf Ewaldson. He's the SVP and CTO of Ericsson, and he made some really interesting comments about some of the limitations of cloud computing, as well as some of the other challenges to the transformative properties networks need to undertake as they develop towards 5G and other types of functionality. Let's take a look. I went to an internet center. You know, this is a very. The reason I use that is because it's very popular in speakers among speakers now to say, you know, this is not about five nines; it's about nine fives. So that's a very popular cliche that is being used at, at for us all over the world. And they go, yeah, you know, in a way. Um, on the other hand, uh, nine fives on a, on a credit card transaction is so-so, to be honest. Um, and uh, we also do a lot of measurements around, um, around users' attitude towards internet, to use service on the internet, to use internet of things and so forth in Ericsson. Um, among one interesting stat that I saw, that only 12% of European credit card transactors feel totally safe when they're doing a transaction today. Even though they're using PayPal and things like that, they feel, oh, maybe there is still something here. Um, so I think, I think we're going to have to rethink 9.5s. And the way we have to rethink 9.5s is that it's no longer about a node or a product or a blade or a server or a, or a, or a, or a, or a, or a fiber connection or a, or a router. A failure or something like that. The nine, the nine fives, uh, the five nines, is really about uh, the end-to-end -end performance, the customer experience, and that I talked about in the in my keynote as well. This is moving now from functions on nodes, on stovepipes, on da da da, whatever, into something that is much more experience-focused, really delivering a function to a user, and then we're not going to. We're not going to have. We're not going to settle with anything less than and the performance that is really required. Um, I'm surprised sometimes how patient I am with some of my applications that keep spinning wheels and so on. I, that is only limiting the usage. And as we get the usage closer connected, the actual usage closer connected to a more reliable infrastructure, we're going to see that we're going to see that end users get used to a high level of experience. The impatience of, of watching movies that keep, uh, I don't know what the English term is. But buffering. Uh, yeah, it keeps buffering, it keeps freezing. It's okay now because we're pretty new to this, but I'm sure that a few years from now there will be no, none of that. And we're not going to take that either. Because our way of perceiving the world is always moving on and enhanced and enhanced and enhanced. So it's like when the... Um, when the Apple iPhone came out, uh, it, it totally transformed every other, every other um, device out there that was uh, addressed, called a smartphone immediately was not called a smartphone. Um, and that transformed that whole industry. So I think there's going to be people always pushing the envelopes on the, on the performance. And therefore, I say we're going to move into an end-to-end -end user experience with five nights. That's what I meant. Can I just say one very quick follow-up? Is network security the biggest barrier to achieving that? Or, or I think so. I think network security is going to be both one of the biggest barriers, but it's going to also be one of the biggest opportunities. Because as network security and reliability is out there, people are, and not only, now I'm not really, people is the wrong word. I would say enterprises and people who want to make use of that connectivity. Imagine you are a car company and you want to be Connecting, and I think Klaus mentioned in his keynote um, that roaming is one of the 
roaming is one of the key issues in the car industry. And it's so obvious. For them, it's here we are in an industry debating and discussing roaming day out and day in, and we think that's really interesting. For them, it's just a problem um, that the, our industry has not been able to solve fast enough. Um, and there is going to be a lot of these things that just are going to be taken for granted if we're going to connect cars and we're going to connect other devices. It was just going to be the expectations of those industries that we solve those problems. And one of those is security. Right. I, you're awfully far back today. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, you made an interesting remark, remark this morning that in terms of the network society, it's now much bigger outside of telecom yeah. than inside telecom. Yeah. Could you expand on that? I uh, that's, a bit, that's a bit. So, whenever you. Whenever you try to give readings that are valuable to people like yourselves, analysts and and, uh, and tech writers and so on, you try to bring value. And my perception, this was a personal comment. So uh, my perception right now is that we've already we don't need in the telco industry to go around and say you know everything this will connect and then you can you know buy your airplane ticket while you're eating your breakfast in your automated car or whatever. It's it's really. <laughs> It's really something that's already going on to this tremendous speed. So my worry is rather that we can't transform the networks fast enough to live up to the expectations of the clouds. And therefore, I think that's um, that's where I'm. Is it bringing a bit of urgency here to the TM forum? I think that will not hurt. One lost, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, just on that note, do you think the industries themselves should be doing more to invest in network infrastructure? Well, I think so. And I made one comment this morning about the growth codes. And I, I, uh, if anyone has a chance, I'm sure that we have copies of that here. We did a study material uh, on, on, on what really makes a stronger EBITDA development among our customers. And it's, it's interestingly enough, you know, we, we didn't know. but. Those who has the best EBITDA developments are also those who has developed strongest on their assets, on their infrastructure, um, and that we have, you know, we have with names and proof of it. <laughs> um, whether that's a totally general rule, that I think is difficult to say. There can be totally other factors that disrupt or make it very hard for an operator to succeed in their business, but certainly there is a correlation with some of the biggest ones, and then you know, examples could be Telstra or or um, SoftBank in Japan, or, or, or um, uh, Smartone in Hong Kong, etc. So, yeah. there, is, there is an element of that. In this next segment, we're going to hear from a representative of Tech Mahindra. This is a giant company in India that provides all sorts of network and telecom solutions. My colleague Joey Jackson sat down with them to discuss the development of telecom networks in India. Let's take a look. I think the evolution, the, the tel telecom revolution, in fact, I would call it, uh, only started in the late 80s or early 90s. Uh, and the, it goes along with the India's own economic story, the, the explosion and, uh, of the growth of India. And uh, maybe the, I believe they are related. From a technology perspective, um, you've seen the subscriber additions. Uh, so before the technology, I would say, the, the, you know, it used to be in the 90s, it was uh, primarily an elites who were having the cell phones. Then early uh, or mid 2000s, it, is, it, it, it became uh, as, you know, it has become uh, explosion. So it's uh, even a, a small street vendor uh, carries a cell phone today. And it has become a business enabler. And uh, from a Tech Mahindra perspective, we look at it as a, what we call as the bottom of the pyramid uh, uh, is our uh, focus area. For example, how are we doing it? Uh, example is uh, we have launched a, a program called uh, Saral Rozgar, which is actually nothing but a job portal, mobile enabled job portal for daily labors. Daily labors, uh, so, that's extremely popular now in India and uh, daily laborers can look for their job and get their jobs because this is a this is what I see is uh, is, is the technology for the masses mm -hmm. and that is where we have been helping uh, uh, other than that you know you, you, a lot of people know what goes uh, in the, the India 
the 2G, 3G story, now the evolution into 4G, 4G is right now be beginning to happen. So the overall technology is still the the, uh, the uh, penetration, 3G penetration is still uh, poor, 4G is even poor, there is a lot we can do. I do believe there is a little bit of an over competition because over competition there is a, you know uh, the investment to uh, higher uh, uh, you know technologies is, is, is kind of lagging. Do you work with uh, some of the major carriers in India? I mean, uh, most of them are our customers. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of room for growth in the, the Indian market still as well. And so you talked about the three G, four G growth. Um, what about 5G? When do you see that coming? <laughs> not in India, <laughs> not in the near future, because even the 4G is, is not even very, very few select cities we have 4G coverage, and majority of the country is still on second generation, but there's a lot to go there. Um, and w what do you see as the biggest obstacles that the telecom industry still has to overcome? I mean, you touched on a little bit, but, but do you have anything else to say on that? You're specific to India or globally? Yeah, specific to India and then globally as well. So specific to India is primarily the the competition, the low ARPU are the primary uh, issues. Uh, the, but the operators are extremely innovative. Uh, you know, for example, uh, in India you have uh, one of the leading retailer offering uh, free data. And the debate in India about the uh, net neutrality is a lot more hotter and more... Uh, it's a topic of a common man. Mm -hmm. uh, a common man is talking about net neutrality than in uh, how much it is discussed in uh, or debated in, in North America. Mm -hmm. Even though the net neutrality debate only has been an age-old debate in North America, but it has never become a reach to the common man. But today, a common man in India knows what is a net neutrality. And because one operator announced that uh, a service from, an, uh, a, from one particular retailer is free, data is free. So mm. that's mm. sparked this debate. Uh, so this is some of the politics uh, that are affecting the uh, overall art. It, it, it's, a, it's a healthy debate, uh, you know, I can't say one way or other, but mm -hmm. it is uh, that is impacting the growth. It's really interesting. Anything else you want to say? Um, I think uh, globally, uh, from a uh, telecom industry perspective, uh, the the over the top uh, player threat uh, you know uh, the cost will have to be uh, the, will have to be different uh, mm -hmm. the economies are uh, different uh, it's changing and what I call uh, is is uh, is what I call is a churn is happening uh, which you know which happens every in, in the industry every twenty years and this is one of those uh, times very interesting times that we are in and as people get more and more connected the world will become more and more connected as well with you know all the growth too so that's yeah. oh absolutely yeah i mean it's, you know if you've heard of this six degrees of separation and i don't know what is the if the economist is to they judge what is the degree of separation it's i'm sure it is less much less than six all right well you know in the tagline for the show i promise that sometimes we're going to talk about much much more and this certainly gets a little bit away from the head net ecosystem that we cover routinely on the program but without some of the software support solutions that are on display here at tm forum all of the rest of it would sort of have a huge gap. So this ecosystem really is a unified thing, and we've enjoyed getting to describe to you some of the software work that's being done. And in a programming note, I'll encourage you to tune in next week where we're going to be at Small Cell World Summit in London, bringing the show to you live from there, and look at all of the latest innovations in small cells, which are certainly poised to take off in 2015. For lots of coverage of TM Forum, as well as editorial recaps uh, with Dan Meyer, Claudia Bach, and some of the other RCR wireless team members, you can check out the RCR website. For lots more multimedia content from the show, I'd encourage you to take a look at the RCR Wireless News YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HetNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HetNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.